Hi everybody, this is Peter Virak here. This is gonna be a little introductory video to my YouTube channel where I talk a bit about myself and what my journey in photography has been so far. In the second part of the clip, I'll be showing you 10 of my favorite images that I've taken until now. So, let's get into this. I am originally from Hungary, but I moved to Melbourne, Australia in 2005 and I've been living here for just over 12 years. I absolutely love this uh, city. I think this is the best city in the world, hands down. Uh, I picked up my first uh, camera in April 2016, just about two years ago. It was a Canon PowerShot SX60HS uh, ultra zoom camera, which I absolutely adored. I shot everything uh, with it from landscapes, uh, macros to portraits. I remember the first day I took hundreds of shots because I was amazed how differently uh, things looked, you know, from behind the lens. Um, I also uh, have a very vivid recollection of the first real photography uh, trip when we drove down to Yarrow Valley, which is about 40k from Melbourne, and I took about 700 shots and I was amazed by the quality of images and I thought to myself, oh my god, I'm gonna get published, like I had at least 20 shots or a dozen shots uh, that looked amazing to me. But looking back at the shots, now I had like one out of 700 that looked semi okay obviously i didn't get published so at the start i really wanted to soak up as much knowledge as possible so i watched a gazillion of uh, youtube videos tutorials about camera gear and also bought a book called stunning digital photography by tony northrop and chelsea northrop which i still find uh, even now today extremely useful i would also like to recommend those of you uh, who are just starting out now in photography and would like to improve their game up their game join an online community and get some constructive feedback uh, from your peers and look at their work that can be uh, tremendous a huge help believe me a huge step in the right direction for me was when i joined national geographics online community called your shot your shot has about half a million active members they run all sorts of assignments about two to three each month and uh, they also have an open contest called the daily dozen where editors select 12 images from about 10 to 12,000 submissions. It is an awesome opportunity to get free exposure, as I said, and please check it out. The first assignment that I participated in was when I truly fell in love with photography. It was about death and how we as humans deal with this excruciatingly painful emotion. Lynn Johnson was curating this particular assignment with a National Geographic uh, photographer and an exquisite visual storyteller. Please check out her work uh, by clicking on the link below. The reason why I'm mentioning her now is because she's a massive reason why I'm here and why I started taking photography seriously. It is in our human nature that we constantly seek validation, recognition. That is how we define ourselves based on our success. But I truly believe that the path itself is much more important, is of much more significance than the final destination. Her encouraging words really meant the world to me, but at the same time she also made me realize how difficult and at times painful this journey is going to be. I feel like in order to be able to improve my photography skills, I constantly need to push myself and get out of my comfort zone, shoot stuff that I normally not shoot, and even this uh, little video is, I believe, a step in the right direction an attempt to elevate my game, so to speak. Photography to me is about seeing things differently. I'm always uh, looking at seemingly mundane subjects from different perspectives, trying to highlight certain features that you wouldn't normally see. I'm also extremely uh, fond of abstract uh, patterns, uh, colors, and simple geometry that both my aerials and nature shots uh, macros reflect. Photography is first and foremost about storytelling. Let's say you're a landscape photographer. You need to be able to transport your audience uh, to that specific location and make them feel like you felt when you took that shot. I'd also like to briefly mention the success that I've uh, had. Um, I've been fortunate enough to have been published by National Geographic. A couple of times uh, my images were selected in the Daily Dozen Open uh, contest. I've also been published in uh, a couple of uh, stories. One of my aerials was selected as photo of the day which was published later on in a couple of other uh, stories i will uh, tell you more about it or show you in the images section later in this uh, uh, video i also made the uh, finals in last year's uh, nature photographer of the uh, year or actually got uh, shortlisted under the uh, aerial uh, category i was also uh, lucky to have been published uh, by australian geographic i also made the uh, uh, finalist uh, um, in the human impact uh, uh, category and uh, 
uh, I just got the, um, an email from them that they verified uh, the raw uh, uh, files um, of my uh, submission. So it will be exhibited uh, in both uh, Sydney and uh, Adelaide, which I'm really, really uh, uh, stoked about. I've also been published by uh, Canon Australia a number of times, uh, curated uh, an assignment uh, for them, a challenge for them, where I selected a dozen or so shots from uh, hundreds uh, or so submissions from uh, community members, and that was a great experience as well. Anyway, let's uh, go and uh, talk about my images now. So this is the first image that I'd like to talk about. This cat, this Burman cat, was playing in the neighborhood, in the front yard, and uh, he was so beautiful. I mean, its eyes were just mesmerizing and piercing blue. If I zoom in, you can see my reflection in its eyes here, which is pretty spectacular. I used the Canon ATD APS-C sensor camera to capture this. It was in pretty low light, so I struggled to uh, focus correctly on the eyes, but I managed to capture this and I was pretty happy with the end result. Let's go to the next one. This is a uh, an aerial shot that I took at Cranbourne Royal uh, Botanical Gardens uh, sometime last year, I can't remember exactly when. This is one of my most uh, published uh, images. It made the finalists in Natu National Geographic's uh, Nature Photography of the Year uh, contest. Uh, and I really loved uh, the abstract uh, patterns in this uh, uh, frame. If I zoom in, you can see these little circular shapes. These are some kind of shrubs. This green strip is some sort of vegetation as well. And uh, <clears throat> the red sand just looked totally amazing, stunning, very vibrant uh, colors. Obviously I dehazed it and uh, added a bit of uh, clarity for more contrast and uh, increased saturation and vibrancy. It really reminded me of, uh, reminds me of Aboriginal uh, patterns. The funny thing about the this day when I took uh, the day when I took this shot was when I flew up the drone. A couple of minutes uh, later, a park ranger came over and asked me what I was doing there. He thought that I was flying a chopper. A chopper? No, it's a drone. Well, that was forbidden, so I had to bring it down. But I still managed to capture this shot. I wish I could uh, go back. Maybe I will, and then we'll try to fly it from another location. But this is definitely something that I. I love. Let's go to the next uh, third image. This is a macro shot. Macro shot uh, is a very close up uh, shot. Um, this is the wing of a dainty swallowtail butterfly. If you zoom in, these little scales looked so interesting. The texture was very similar to that of a carpet or uh, fabric. So this is a cropped uh, uh, version. I stacked eight images in Photoshop because the depth of field is extremely shallow at this uh, magnification. So next shot. This is the fourth image. This is a Eurasian coot scooting across the water at the Drummies Bridge Reserve which is approximately 10 kilometers from uh, where I live. I really love going to that location. There are plenty of uh, bird species uh, uh, to photograph uh, there. This was taken uh, early in the morning. The sun was at the perfect angle uh, with the backlighting. The splashing water um, turned out to be a beautiful and uh, very rich golden uh, color. I also really loved the, the tiny little uh, bouquet that's covering the entire frame. Next shot. This shot is very dear to my uh, heart. This extreme close-up portrait of a wild um, European fox or red fox. European red foxes were introduced to Australia over a hundred years ago and they have become a pest. Unfortunately, uh, native wildlife just couldn't uh, compete with them. They pose a major threat to uh, Mm, birds, bird species uh, mainly, 
And uh, if you didn't know, Melbourne is completely overpopulated with uh, red foxes. There are about 20 per, per square kilometer, I believe. So this uh, red fox I stumbled upon was at the local creek trail, the Gardens uh, Creek Trail. It's only a few hundred meters from uh, uh, where I live. I usually shoot uh, bird species there. So I was extremely lucky that I, I bumped into this uh, one. Unfortunately, it was a very uh, well nourished, uh, extremely uh, weak little fellow. And uh, at the time, the first time I, uh, I, I spotted it, I didn't have my telephoto lens and I had to go back and luckily it didn't move uh, too uh, far away from, the, from that location. I was crawling on the ground and uh, it was half asleep sniffing the air so I focused uh, uh, solely on its uh, nose to blur out the background and also went with a very muted uh, uh, tonal range just to add a bit of, uh, to the atmosphere make it look more dreamy. Uh, this is one of my favorite shots. I, I am just so fascinated with the rainbow uh, lorikeets. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you. Uh, <clears throat> On its eye. I took this shot with a 1DX Mark II which I've had for almost five months uh, and I, I totally love that the camera, the focusing system is exceptional. Uh, this rainbow lorikeet uh, mm, had been foraging, feasting on a piece of uh, nectar in the uh, local neighborhood and I asked my friend to try to scare it away and luckily it took off and I uh, managed to take a couple of shots, actually like four or five uh, shots uh, in burst mode, but this one was the, the best. The, the lighting was just uh, perfect. The abundance of colors is just mesmerizing. It, it is truly uh, one, of the, one of the creatures that I'm extremely uh, fond of. So let's go to the next shot. Here's something a bit different. <clears throat> I uh, was about to photograph birds on this particular day at Jails Park and as I was walking past the power lines I was like oh my god look at the uh, look at the fog the low-lying fog that was hugging uh, the ground and the shadows transitioning into the highlights it just looked uh, mesmerizing and uh, really caught my attention so I grabbed my camera and uh, uh, I took this shot at 400 uh, millimeters because I wanted to compress the space as much as possible. I also love the uh, geometry, the uh, symmetry of this uh, particular frame. I was lucky to have been published by uh, uh, Smithsonian uh, Institute in the US just recently and this was also picked by National Geographic as an editor's favorite. So here we go. This uh, shot uh, made the finals in uh, this year's uh, Australian Geographic's Nature Photographer of the Year in the Human uh, Impact category. This is actually one of my uh, first uh, shots with a drone. Uh, probably, uh, I took this shot probably two weeks uh, after I uh, got my Phantom 4 Pro. And uh, this was the time when my mom uh, was uh, with us here in Melbourne. Um, she flew out from uh, Hungary and she absolutely uh, loved uh, this uh, location. You can see her right here and here I am controlling the drone with the remote. I really loved the, the symmetry as well and um, the lush vegetation on the left side. And we were really lucky because there was no wind even though the, um, the weather was pretty abysmal, it was pretty overcast. I only had a couple of uh, uh, clouds here so it wasn't too distracting on the right side of the frame. Let's go to the next uh, frame. So this is the second last uh, uh, image. I Took this one, uh, I believe, January or December uh, in 2016. Anyway, it's been over a year, a year and a half. Uh, and uh, this was uh, published by National Geographic in the digital magazine as well. This was a Daily Dozen uh, uh, winner uh, or one of the, um, the winners. I'm gonna zoom in uh, for you so you can see the pylons, the wooden pylons that looked uh, very interesting uh, uh, from above. I didn't take this at a 90 degree angle, but it was probably about 80 degrees. I really like the contrast between the uh, these two uh, colorful uh, boats. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, it makes the, the viewer think like, how the hell did they get uh, in the middle? Uh, how did they maneuver in between those pylons? So, I really like that shot. 
So this is the last uh, shot that I want to talk about. I took this drone image at Moriello Beach and uh, the day was really abysmal in, in terms of uh, the weather. It was pretty overcast, uh, cold, a bit uh, windy as well. I took off from a nearby uh, a pier and at that time I couldn't really see the little family uh, uh, right here. And I was really lucky uh, because I am really fond of uh, juxtaposing uh, subjects in my frames. And the hundreds of seagulls up here in the middle. I'm going to zoom in uh, for you a little bit. That's right there. In contrast with the, um, the colorful towels and umbrellas and the way the kids were uh, playing in the sand, I think it just really worked uh, in this uh, frame. This was uh, published by uh, National uh, Geographic, selected as photo of the day, also um, been published in a number of stories, such as the 17 uh, amazing uh, aerial images of uh, animals last year in November, and also got uh, published by Canon Australia. So that's about it. I should really uh, wrap this uh, video up. Uh, it turned out to be a little bit longer than I wanted it to be, uh, but I hope that you still enjoyed it a little bit. From now on, uh, I'll be posting uh, one or two uh, videos uh, per month with the behind the scenes B-roll type uh, shots, drone footages, and we'll also discuss uh, some of my images in depth and my uh, thought process behind them. Please check out my recent uh, B-roll type of uh, shots and also hit the subscribe button. Thanks guys, see ya.